Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to ITO Chapter Viewers. In this video, I have another viewer request, and this one is gonna be pretty short and sweet. I think it's gonna be pretty easy. It is, should I get the MacBook Pro non-touch bar or the MacBook Pro touch bar? Easiest answer, and you can close the video after I say this, get the one with the touch bar. Now, if you wanna know why, stick around and I will let you guys know. All right, so first off, if you're just looking at this as a casual user, you're gonna say 2.3 gigahertz, 2.3 gigahertz, 2.3 gigahertz, why is there such a big price difference? Well, look closely, dual core, dual core, quad core, quad core. All of the 2018 MacBook Pros come with a at least a quad core processor. Now, if you jump up to 15 inch, um, you're looking at a six core processor, but that is uh, probably out of your price range. So let's focus on these right now. We're looking at a dual core machine versus a quad core machine. Now, if we're looking at a you know $300 price difference, uh, for double the processing power, more or less, I mean, I would go with this one. Think about how often you're gonna use this machine. Think about how much time it could potentially save you. Think about how much money that could save you in time. Now, I know time does not necessarily equal money, but if you're someone like me uh, doing 4K video edits every day, uh, that time adds up pretty quickly. Uh, I could cut my time in half by getting the maxed out 15 inch, which I did, versus getting something a little cheaper and that extra time adds up for quality of life for me and also i can put out more videos for you which makes me more money and helps you guys make decisions on macbook pros kind of like inception there i really cannot recommend these 2017 macbook pros yes these are 2017 they have not been refreshed these are the seventh gen uh, these are the eighth gen these have the crappy keyboard there's really nothing to like about these macbook pros um, I would not recommend this. So if you're on the fence between this and the touch bar, save up the extra money, get the touch bar. There's almost no situation. There might be a couple, but there's almost no situation when you should get one of these. So that's the short and sweet answer. Uh, I know I've done so many videos comparing these two. If you wanna see more in depth, go check out those videos. Um, but this is just kind of a PSA because I've gotten a lot of questions about this. Just stay away from these. There's nothing that good about them unless you really, really need a pro level machine but don't have the money and are unwilling to save up. But I don't want you guys to be disappointed with your purchase because then you'll come back to the video and say, hey, you led me wrong. And I do not want to lead you guys wrong. I want to give you guys the best information that I can so that you guys can be happy with your purchase. And that's why I'm saying just save up, get the quad core, get the better keyboard, get the touch bar, get the better screen, the better trackpad. Pretty much everything about this thing is better. So save up a little bit, get the one with the touch bar. Uh, if you want to see more of an in-depth video, again, I've got other videos on that, but that's all I got for this video, guys. If you liked it, hit it with a big thumbs up, subscribe, send this to any of your friends that are on the fence. Hopefully this will help them, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.